Hello, this is Steve. And in this video today, we want to talk about what is a data platform. This video is aimed at those looking to implement a data platform into their organization. This is the start of a series of guides that we're gonna go through, decide, describe what is a data platform, whether it's right for your business, and also look at the costs and the ROI. So today, what we're gonna focus on though, is what exactly is a data platform and what are the components within it. Let's head over and have a look at what a data platform is. The first thing we want to talk is what is a data platform? Now a data platform is a strategic tool made from a now a data platform is a a data platform is a strategic tool made from a compilation of multiple components that compiles golden data, democratizes that data, and leverages across the business. So what that means is we often think of a data platform as somewhere where we combine and store data and maybe do a bit of reporting. I mean, in fact, a data platform is much, much more of this. And it does a lot more than just store data. What it does is it creates this golden data. And golden data is centralized data that is trusted, validated, and AI ready. So if you want to implement AI within your organization, we know that we need data that is in a good place and is trusted and validated and transformed and cleaned. And this is golden data. And this is what a data platform does, creates this golden data. And then it allows you to use that golden data, not just in reporting, but in things like apps and AI and lots of areas across your business. Now, a data platform is made up of multiple components. And a component is a separate piece of the overall system that focuses on a specific function. And examples of this could be an AI component, a master data management component to make sure your data is clean, or reporting such as Power BI or other reporting tools. So now let's dive in to a typical data platform and the components of that data platform. So here we have what are lots of different components of the data platform. You'll see that we have things like our data infrastructure and reporting, but there's a lot more. And this is what makes it a, a modern data platform. All of these components working together to create this golden data that we can use across the business. Now within each component, you know, one component is a separate piece of the overall system that focuses on that specific function. So here, this component is called the data infrastructure, right? And the, the idea of this is to get our data ready for use. Now you'll see within this that we have multiple layers and a layer is a functional part of that component. So within the data infrastructure, we have the storage layer. We also have the ingest layer, the transform layer and the deploy layer. Now within layers, we have an asset. And an asset is just a tool or a technology that builds a layer. And you'll see here that this asset is called transform. And this is where we transform the data. And then in our example, in blue, we've also given an example of a specific tool or technology to see for you to see what could be used in order to make this asset. So here we have components, our layers and our assets. Right. So now we're going to go through and you'll see here that we have six different components within a data platform. This is very typical and these are what we recommend when building a, a modern data platform. We're going to go one by one through each of these components just to understand them a little bit more. So the first one is our data infrastructure. This is really key of any data platform and you can't really have a data platform without this key part. This is what you know, moves, ingests, transforms, and stores the data. So where the data lives, obviously very, very important. 
First though, we have this deploy layer. Now the deploy layer is what we use in IT to make sure that when we as developers are building this, we keep our data systems up to date and we deploy things in a safe and efficient way. And this is through you know, continuous integration, continuous deployment, best practice called CICD. So there's a whole strategy that we put through in this layer and we build this out with code in order to make thing everything is running and deployed smoothly. We have the ingest and transform layer. Now this is where we get the data from our source systems, get it out into you know, the single storage. And we also need to transform it. This is where we apply our business rules, we clean the data, we make it in a good format. And then of course, the storage layer. We can use things like data lakes or data warehouses. This is an example here where we have a bronze, silver, gold called the medallion architecture. There are many different architectures and we don't always use this one. Although this is what you'll see often with a lot of marketing at the moment. We could still use data warehouses and use SQL, or we could use these data lake houses. There's a few options and it depends on your business and how you use your data. Next is the reporting and BI. It's very uncommon to roll out a data platform without this component. And this again has a few layers. We have an exploration layer, and this is really if you have pro code teams. Now, not every data platform will have every layer. So if you're a very business focused or a small organization, you may not have an exploration layer, but many organizations like to open their data for pro code teams, pro developers, just to run their own queries in a language such as SQL. Next, we have the semantic layer. This is again for allowing users to access the data in an ad hoc and self-service way. Yet this is more business focused. So for maybe your finance teams who want to run some ad hoc numbers, they can connect through this semantic layer. It's a pathway to your data and it allows self-service and tools like Microsoft Excel or Power BI. Finally, you have the reporting layer. This is structured and defined dashboards and reports such as uh, Power BI reports you see or, or pre-built Excel reports. You also now have a lot going on with generative AI and insights. This is allowing you and business users to talk to their data in a sort of uh, interface where you can type natural language questions, get visuals and responses as well. One of the most important components is the master data management component. Within that, we have the MDM layer. And this is a layer that looks at all the different data across your different sources. Often with different sources, you'll have things named differently. So you may have company ABC Inc in one source, and it may be called ABC Company in your second source. This difference causes a lot of issues with reporting. So this MDM layer really has this list of golden data. And this is what's created this golden data set where we have a single source of the truth. We can also do things like write back to our sources. So the data platform is not only ingesting data, but part of a good data platform actually reaches out, right? And it goes back to the source based on its knowledge of the other source systems and the golden data, it will update and create a single record across all your sources. So it's a two way street for a good data platform. In another layer, we might have business processes where business often still have data in formats like Excel. This is very difficult to ensure data quality. So we build in layers to our data platform that make sure that things like Excel have business validation rules are run before they get into our data. So it doesn't taint our golden data. This allows manual processes and manual updates, which often always happen, and but still having this good data quality. Finally, the monitor layer. We want to monitor data quality. We want to monitor the system as a whole. On top of that, we might have some exception reporting. Although a lot of this is automated for the data quality and we use things like AI and rules to try and stop bad data quality, there'll always be some things that need manual intervention. And this is where exception reporting comes in, which allows us to 
have reports and view the data quality rules that need to be manually looked at. The next component we have is the intelligent collaboration component. And this is really taking your data and using it in different parts of the business. Outside of just reporting, using your data to enhance business processes. We have the productivity app layer. And this is where you can build apps using your data. This can be embedded in, in other tools such as your external website or other applications. Or you can build custom apps and low-code tools such as Power Apps using your data from the golden data in the data platform. And new and a very emerging layer, this is Agentic Workflows layer. So Agentic Workflows use generative AI and they mimic analysts. What they can do is we set up these agents, which are AI agents, and they're almost like their analysts who are working, who are monitoring things. When they see things happen, when they see data, or they can be looking at certain patterns, they can actually take actions such as reaching out by email, emailing a customer, or alerting someone in the business. So this is a way for automatically looking at your data when you see things and when these agents see things which need action, they can actually take that action. Finally, we have the workflow automation layer. This is really a response. So when we want set actions, when certain thresholds, for example, are, are triggered with our data, this can automate and say, maybe our sales have dropped 10%. Let's automate a, a process such as sending out an alert so that we know something's happened. The next component we'll look at is the AI and machine learning. Now, this normally sits on top and uses the data in other systems. Here, yeah, we have the machine learning or the ML layer. We can train AI models to perform jobs, you know, like forecasting, so we can predict things in the future better than we can on our own without these advanced algorithms. We can also look at things like anomaly detection. So example, if you're in banking, and you want to detect fraud from your customers. Very hard to do this manually, so we use advanced AI machine learning algorithms to detect this. We also might want to allow our data scientists to explore the data and run their own experiments and try and find new patterns. So we can do things like run predictions to try and find something we didn't know about before, or maybe just use some advanced analysis in order to prepare some reporting. And this is some really powerful analysis that we can't do manually and we need this advanced algorithms of the AI and machine learning. Sitting on top of all of this is the data governance and strategy component. This is a slightly different one because this is more of a strategy and less of a technology piece. We always want to have some to plan, implement, and monitor. This is really a strategy piece where we look through, create things like races, make sure that when we launch our data platform, we have a strategy and we understand what we're gonna do with it. We also want to govern it. And this is things like creating data catalogs, right? Improve data understanding, make sure we're compliant across different systems. Finally, we wanna secure our data. We wanna make sure that we're protected against data leaks and uh, bad actors trying to expose our data. So we want to mitigate those risks and comply with all regulations such as GDPR. So that is a very quick... So that is an overview and an example of a data platform Again, it does a lot more than just store the data and a few reports. It's a system, it's a tool that's used across the business in order to advance the business and make data decisions. So now let's just look at some frequently asked questions about a data platform. So do you have to implement all components? No, not necessarily. Most companies will start with just things like the data infrastructure and reporting. So that just storing and the reporting of the data, but then build out the other components over time. 
It doesn't have to be all at once. And this is often a good approach in order to slowly build up and as you learn how to be data-driven as an organization. Do I need a data platform if I already have reports and dashboards? We would always recommend a yes. A data platform does so much more and it creates this golden data, which is that centralized data, trusted, validated, and AI ready. And you can use this across the business. Having that golden data layer, which really allows your data to be trusted and used in AI is very, very important if you want to expand and use your data for a lot more. Is AI necessary or can we just focus on reporting? Well, it's a good idea, I think, to start with reporting, but now AI adds a lot of value over time. We've gone through a bit of hype cycle with AI and a lot of organizations have gone all in and aren't seeing as many results. However, there's huge value within AI and that relies on you having this golden data that's trusted and validated in a well-designed data platform. So if you get that right, you will find that adding your AI becomes quite easy and this will really help you to make better decisions across your business. Will this replace my finance team's work? No, not at all. And this goes with any team. A data platform is there to enhance the team. What it does is it automates repetitive tasks. These are sort of low value tasks such as exporting data, manually massaging it, that a lot of people spend a lot of time on and can be fully automated away. It allows your teams to focus on higher value analysis, do things which are helping the company such as finding new insights. And it also gives them a whole bunch of new tools such as this AI that they may have never had before. So that is a quick overview of a data platform and its components. We've included a link below so that you can go and see this full guide written out. There'll also be a lot more guides written over the next few weeks showing how we can actually enhance this data platform, some tools and technologies that we'll use, whether it's right for your business, and most importantly, understanding the cost and the return on investment. Definitely subscribe to the channel if you want to be kept up to date and please go along and, and read the full guide. So thank you so much. We'll see you at the next one.